Hi everybody, Tom Waters here from Creative Waters Art with another video. This is going to be a time lapse and this here is the photograph that I used. And what I do is I pull that into Photoshop and I reduce that to just a few value, values to get a value map. And for this painting, uh, what I did, instead of just doing a toned canvas, to, to um, get the white off the canvas is I use that Photoshopped image of just four values and I just laid down some color to establish some darks and some lights and some colors and that was basically my underpainting. What you see here is I'm going in now that on top of that underpainting and I'm starting by establishing my darkest darks. So I'm looking at my reference photo and I'm going through and I'm just indicating where those darkest darks are going to be and they're going to be in those deep shadow areas between the pots um, and inside some of the, the deeper pots. And um, one of the things about this painting is it has a lot, awful lot of edges. There's a lot of shapes and a lot of nesting. And so there's soft edges, there's hard edges, and there's a lot of lost edges. You're going to see as I go along here in some of these dark areas, I actually obliterate some of the edges between the shadow and the pots themselves, and the pots just melt back in to the painting and into the shadows. So once I've done that, you know, here again, I'm just getting some, some shadows established. And then once I get the shadows established, what I'll do is I'll go and just indicate some of my lighter lights, and my, my highlight areas. Um, on this top pot here, you can see I'm just sort of reducing that edge, um, making it sort of disappear. And also um, just putting in some paint in those seams and creases between the pots. So I noticed that there were a couple of things in my drawing that were a little bit off and you saw that with that transition there that I just made those adjustments before I went forward. I had to increase the size of the bottom of that middle pot and the overall size of the one underneath it. And then I went in and I'm just sort of indicating where my lightest areas are going to be and all of this will get painted over. Um, and the technique I'm using, so what I did is I grabbed a little plastic dish here and I put some paint on it. instead of going back and forth to my palette all the time which is sort of time consuming because the technique I'm using here is more of a dry brush technique so I'm not putting a lot of paint on the brush and I'm sort of scrubbing it in so you know with the paint and how quickly acrylics dries out instead of going back and forth to the palette I sometimes use this little dish put my paint on so I can just quickly go from the canvas pick up a little bit more paint and then go right back to the canvas and you, can, you saw there briefly that uh, I wipe off my brush to keep it dry. Um, so I'm doing a lot of just layering throughout this whole thing. I'm layering thin layers of paint that I'm just sort of scumbling on and dry brushing on in a lot of areas. There are times where I use a little bit heavier paint. But for the most part, I'm getting the texture that I want in these pots by layering that paint um, in a dry method on top, one layer on top of the other. So here now I'm starting to go in and put some color into it. You know, I, I establish my darks, I establish my lights, and I'm going to be going back and forth and softening edges and putting some color in here. I'm putting a little texture so that I know that I'm going to be going over with paint later, but that some of that texture will show through to give the pots some character. These are clay pots, and so they have a lot of stains and fungus and nicks and scrapes on them and I want them to feel well used. And here I'm uh, again just fixing my drawing a little bit. The edge of that pot wasn't quite right. Um, and I'll, I'll, you'll see later I'm going to go back in and fix that some more. So now I'm just going back in and I'm adjusting values. I'm establishing some texture again using mostly um, fairly dry paint on the brush and sort of scrubbing it in so I get that uh, nice worn feeling on these pots. This is one of those instances where a lot of times you don't want to use a lot of white because a lot of white can end up feeling kind of chalky. Um, in this case the pots themselves are kind of chalky so by mixing my colors with white that helps to get that effect. So again uh, it's just a process of going back and establishing. You see here I scrub in some paint and then I'll be going back and then sort of sort of dry blending, putting a different value in there and then blending out those edges. I'll be going back in there again later and um, making those adjustments. For the most part my palette is I using, I'm using cadmium red light 
using a, a little bit of yellow ochre, also a little bit of cadmium, cadmium yellow, um, some Payne's gray, a touch of uh, phthalo blue, and titanium white, and that's pretty much it, I believe. Okay, so here's an instance where you see I just sort of deepened that shadow underneath that pot and made that bottom edge just disappear into the shadows. I do the same thing um, in a couple of places. So I'm starting to get a little bit more color back in here, just continuing to apply a little bit more of that, that terracotta color over those light areas. You'll see I'll be adding more, and then in those dark areas. So by scumbling colors, you know, I can use that same color both in the darks and the lights. And when I scumble it over the lights, it's a, it ends up with a lighter tint. And when I scumble it over some of those shadows, it still lends some of that color, but it still maintains its shadow. And here I'm sort of adding some texture by, or what I just did there was um, I spotted some texture on those pots just to keep them having some variability. And I just continue to work those edges. Um, Darkening some areas where I need shadow, establishing some lights, getting a little more color inside some of these pots and on the outside. And again, see I fixed that edge because it wasn't quite round enough. And then I go back in and soften that edge a little bit. So sometimes what you'll see me do is I'll take some heavier paint and I'll lay down like I did on the edge of that pot. I'll lay down that line and then I'll take a different brush that's dry and go right over the edge of that to soften it out. There again, I'm just putting in some texture. Using some darker values and just sort of scuffing it onto the surface there. Now moving on uh, to this pot is going to have a nest in it. So I start at the nest and I start with my shadow is underneath and then I put a little bit of some brownish greens underneath. And then I'm using a rubber tipped tool to do, I think it's called scraffito, where you scratch in the wet paint to create some texture in there. You can see I did it again there. And I'm just laying in some shadow area color and then going over that with some lighter color and then scratching that again to get some texture, make it look like uh, twigs and branches and then just sort of taking that light paint and flicking it on there with the liner brush and I just go back and forth in layers so here's some lights and then I add some midtones. I later go back and add some shadow um, and then some lights again just to get a bunch of variability in there you're going to see here in a second it's going to jump and you all have added some shadow and so there we are you can see the shadow that I added in underneath and I'm working on the eggs so I sort of get um, a mid-tone value for my eggs established to establish placement and then try to get the local color close to what I want it, the final color to be and then just again using layers I'm just sort of blending my light areas and I'll go back and add some darks into the shadow areas and just keep blending back and forth um, until I get the eggs to be appear the way that I want them so there's probably, in, in doing these eggs, for instance, there's probably um, seven or eight layers by the time I'm done. And then I'm going back with uh, some lights, where the light's going to hit that nest, and some of those twigs and grass is going to come out over the tops of the eggs. Do a few adjustments on my pot. And then uh, you can see it's a little bit of a color change on this next clip, because the lighting changed for me. But then I'm going, I had to go back in. My eggs were sitting too much on the surface and I needed to darken down the edges and get them to blend in and you know, with the shadows underneath and darken the shadows. And so that's what I'm doing here is just darkening my shadows on my eggs, and sort of uh, almost eliminating some of those edges, blending them into the shadow background and then putting a little more shadow onto the, uh, onto the nest. So here's the final result. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this and found something useful. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to get notified of new videos and keep painting. Thank you.